Hey, 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 y'all. Guess what? So, I'm sitting there watching the Young Thug YSL Rico trial, and Mickey and Kevin uh, made the trial. Let's go in here and look and see. Because well, you didn't bother say. to question any of them, right? I didn't question them, no. Yeah. So, <laughs> you don't know whether, for certain whether it was gang related or a bet. Or what the reason was or the intent was behind Mr. Kendrick standing on that vehicle. That's fair to say. You don't know because you didn't question any of them. I saw the reaction of Mr. Lucci when he was questioned about it. Why not ask him? Yeah. Why not go and ask him then? I didn't have to ask him. I saw his reaction. He wasn't happy. He didn't have to follow the evidence. He wasn't happy. Uh-huh. His lawyer's on fire. Happy because he lost a bet and it had nothing to do with gang activity. Yeah, it is assuming facts. You don't know one way or another what the reason or intent was in my client's mind. Isn't that fair to say? I don't know what his intent was, but he got a reaction out of Lucci. You believe in the First Amendment, right? I do. You believe in our people's right to free speech? I do. You believe in musicians' ability to create lyrics? for art, right? I, I do. But you stated in your testimony that you think rap music that depicts violence is popular, but it shouldn't be. I agree. It shouldn't be glorified. And I stand by that. Do you, you also said that there are songs which have killed children in Atlanta. Which songs? I don't know specific songs, but I know that is music. The reason for the beef as far as the Atlantic Station situation. Okay. They were going back and forth on social media with songs and disrespecting each other. Next thing you know, it's gunplay and children are dead. You're the expert, detective. Which I... songs? Which songs regarding rap violence caused the death of children? I don't know the name of the songs, but I know that those particular kids were involved in music, talking about each other in the music. Then it's violence spawn because of the music do you think you should be an expert on rap lyrics they are limited. You... <laughs> i never said i was an expert on rap music you said that you understand that lyrics and even lyrics about violence can be used as art to depict to be marketed and for commercial purposes without being factual right you agree with that? I have heard of that and seen that, but and, and that it, can be done in it's movies. Not, it's not a good thing. That's all I said. Not a good thing. Right. You ever seen the movie The Untouchables with Robert De Niro? Probably not. No. No. Goodfellas. I've seen Goodfellas. Okay. So, do you think Robert De Niro should be charged with crimes because he depicts murder and violence? No. What he about Al Pacino? He, he, if he was charged when he stepped off the movie set and he went and did the actual things that he did in the movie, then yes, he should be charged. But you said in earlier testimony that if it's depicting previous actual acts of violence, then that should be a crime. Like I said, if Robert De Niro left the movie set and went out and shot somebody like he did in the movie, then yes, he should be charged. If That's you... not what you said earlier. You said... I said argumentative. Okay. Did, did, did you say earlier that someone who who is rapping about a previous act of violence should be held responsible for that. That's not what I said. Okay. I said that she, they put in the music or in the, the wording of the songs things that have happened, meaning whether it was a shooting, whether it was a drive-by, whether it was a smash and grab, whatever. I say that it's, sometimes this can be a confession Sometimes it could be taunting just to the other uh, gang members or the acts or whatever. So if it's taunting, then it should be criminalized. Is that your? I didn't say that either. Okay. So Bob Marley singing, I shot the sheriff is okay too, right? He shoot the sheriff in real life like that man did up in Kentucky, then yes. Yeah. (laughs) Or like the sheriff shot the judge. you, You don't know much about Bob Marley's life, do you? What's that got to do with anything? Okay. Uh, you, but you, you understand that <laughs> you, you've already testified 
that you have we made no the georgia rico trial man played in this earlier or directly related to any actual criminal activity right i didn't say it was connected to criminal activity i never said that well this is a fascinating okay. so uh, trial just, just free speech then we can agree on that it's free speech but like i said when they when you talk about a crime that actually happened and your group is the suspect it's 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 what it's what it's obvious that you were involved maybe in that crime it's obvious that you were involved if you're singing about it could have been yes sir to the characterization of it's obvious that you were involved maybe and and i'm going to object to mr uh, overruled what else it, hang on <laughs> to mr app's misstatement is that what you said ask your question again thank you your honor so it's what you're saying is if someone sings about an act of violence that previously occurred, then it's obvious that they were involved. That's that is a misstatement. That okay. wasn't is that is that what you're saying? Not exactly. I'm saying that if crimes have been committed and then you go brag about it in a song, then it's what? hard to defend that you didn't have anything to do with what you what your pretty much confessing in a song. Okay, and that's, I guess that's my point. If Robert De Niro plays Al Capone and he's he's playing Al Capone in a movie, is it then obvious that he's the one who's in the mafia? I, I don't understand. Why is it that singing about a previous crime that occurred somehow ties you to that crime? What, what evidence do you, and let me rephrase, what evidence do you have that either Mr. Kendrick or Mr. Williams actually committed the murder of Donovan Thomas. I didn't give you any, I didn't tell you that oh. I had evidence of that. Oh. Did well, I tell you that? You, you testified. I testified that they killed Donovan Thomas. You testified that it was obvious. <laughs> Got me mixed ago. up, I didn't tell you that. So it's not obvious that they're involved? Oh. Oh, objection, Ron, I'm not sure where we're gonna go. A minute ago. Hang on and let me listen to her objection. Yes. This is a crazy case. I don't know how many uh, people who follow me are interested in this case. It's not so much like I don't follow rap music at all. So I don't know much about the rappers. Um, but... I do follow the criminal justice system <laughs> and this trial has been going on for like two years already or, or yeah, I think they've been in jail for a couple years now. Um, and the prosecution is in my opinion, losing this case. I think this is day 148 of the trial so 148 days is how long this trial has been going on and um if you're not familiar with it um there's been too much really happen in the case uh for me to kind of catch up um but i think maybe i'll try and do that i'll try and put together a video of just little snippets that i thought were really fascinating in this case i'll try to do that but um i really follow this every day and so i think i'm gonna start following this one um on my channel as well so um for anybody who um is interested in just the way that uh, the court system works and trials work, period. So what happened was they had, the prosecution had, uh, the state had called one of their witnesses and it was a retired detective who had worked um, a lot of the underlying cases that are being used 
for this RICO case. You know, you have a whole bunch of little cases that are kind of under a great big umbrella uh, in the RICO statute. And so they're accused of doing just all kinds of stuff, um, stealing and um, murking and just a whole bunch of stuff. And, but being in a gang is really what they're being charged with is gang activity and all that encompasses that. Um, and so um, they put up their detective as a witness and he said something that he should not have said. They qualified him as an expert. Um, they started out the biggest thing that's happened in this case. They started out under Judge Glanville. And Judge Glanville had to end up recusing himself uh, not very long ago. And this woman, um, Judge Whitaker, has took over. Um, and so there's there's just a whole lot that's, that's went on. So the guy got banned because he said something he wasn't supposed to say. And then the state has brought in this woman as a last minute kind of replacement for him. And you know she wasn't prepared to do this. But she's holding her own, I think. That defense attorney, though, they're they're trying like twenty seven people or twenty people in this trial. So everybody's got their own lawyer. So the courtroom is right, full. We, we just want to make sure um, that, with regard to Mr. App's questioning. He's going to confine his questions to um, things that have to do with his client, Mr. Kendrick. And um, you should likewise confine your answers to things that have to do with his client right now while he's the one questioning, okay? And not talk about any of the other uh, co-defendants on trial here. And um, things like a search warrant that you know got the results of which were suppressed don't even veer into territory like that and i'm not going to go through all of the different possibilities but just be mindful okay. when you testify to be careful not to testify to anything that you know as an experienced detective shouldn't be being talked about okay okay all right any any other kind of parameter anybody wants to mention well uh, um your Honor, and I guess I'm speaking to the detective as well. Detective. Okay. Um, I represent Shannon Stillwell. Um, I am not asking this question, and he is specifically asking about Mr. Kendrick. I would not anticipate that the answer would include pronouns such as they or, or things of that nature. Um, and I would ask that anything be strictly limited to Mr. Kendrick. I understand. Right. Anybody else? I'll, I'll absolutely limit my questions relating only to Mr. Kendrick. All right. Okay, I think we're ready to get the jury back. They may not be ready to come back, but. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for the jury in this case. My Lord. And the state has been so unprepared and they've dropped the ball on so many levels. It's, this has been the most expensive and longest trial in his, in Georgia history. So it's a pretty big deal. Plus they're free. They, they're not out on bond. All of these defendants are in custody and um just this evidence is unbelievable you'll see if you watch it all with us you'll see while they're kind of lingering around if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button subscribe to the channel hit the like button if you do and we're going to go through these trials and see how broken our system is. Because, you know, it, it, 
our judicial system does not see color. Uh, it does not see um, male or female. You know, we're all subject to the same broken system. And it would do us well to be able to see. I'm so glad that these trials are now being televised. So we can actually see what's going on in there. You can see the biases. You know, I say it, it almost every time we're in a trial. The criminal justice system is a people business. If the judge likes the prosecutor or if the judge likes the uh, defense attorney and doesn't like the other, you know, it happens. Do you think everybody can just drop their own biases whenever they want to? A lot of people can't, whether they say they can or not. And there's such a thing as good lawyering and bad lawyering, <laughs> for that matter. <laughs> the main prosecutor who has prosecuted this whole case has been Miss Love, and she's not so, here. Detective, you were she saying that bum fumbled it so I bad. You, but, but that if she's not even here no more. Someone raps or sings about an act of violence that actually occurred, then, then it becomes obvious of what. To me, it's bragging. Could be taunting or bragging. And are do, well, let me ask you this: do you, Are you aware of whether Mr. Kendrick wrote any of those lyrics that were played in the courtroom earlier? No, I'm not aware. So you don't know if he was even, if my client was even involved in writing those lyrics. I never said he did. And hmm. you have, you're not aware of Mr. Kendrick in any way, shape, or form being tied to or involved in the murder of Donovan Thomas. Isn't that true? I know he was arrested and charged or a suspect for it. Um, were his fingerprints found anywhere? I didn't work the homicide portion of that. You will have to refer to. So you the, don't know. You don't know I, if his. Fingerprints. I didn't get into the homicide investigation. You don't know if his fingerprints were found in the uh, on the Tahoe or any evidence in the case. No. You don't know if his DNA was found. No. You don't know if any ballistics were found that were tied to Mr. Kendrick. Correct. No. In fact, you're not aware of any eyewitnesses who saw Mr. Kendrick commit that crime. Correct. I don't know of any. And. You went to great lengths to give an expert opinion about what the state refers to as an exhibit, I believe, exhibit 535YB, which is the song called Slime. And I'm, I apologize, I may be less genteel than Mr. Steele is, but it's a piece of evidence. The, the, the song's actual name is Slime Shit. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And you stated earlier, you don't know the date that that song was released, right? No, I only see the date that it was uploaded to uh, YouTube, like I told Mr. Steele. You don't know the date it was written? I don't. You don't know who wrote the lyrics? I don't. And so if that song, if I told you that, that track was released officially on September 16th of 2015, and that... Sustained. I didn't, I'll withdraw the question. If, hypothetically, if those lyrics were released in 2014, before the murder of Donovan Thomas, then wouldn't it be fair to say that the Tahoe mentioned in the song had nothing to do with Mr. Thomas's murder, right? That would be fair. You're not suggesting that whoever wrote the lyrics was psychic and predicted the murder of Donovan Thomas, right? I did not say that. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. I have no other questions.
All right, are there other defense terms with questions for this witness? Come on up. I thought all this went away when KISS and all those um, rock bands uh, were coming out. Like, didn't they do away with being able to use Good afternoon, music lyrics? Former like, agent? Wasn't it like Twisted no, Sister uh, and. I'm actually a retired uh, investigator, but I was a former task force. NWA. Officer. Retired investigator. I thought the government, I thought that Underwood. they banned that Charter. a long time Shannon. ago. Still but okay. obviously they didn't. I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. All right, good. Because they're holding um, first of all, I just want to their musical the lyrics uh, against them. Re and I know you were answering the question. You brought up some Atlantic Station incident. That has nothing to do with this case, Oh, correct? no, it has nothing to do with this case. Okay. It's, it was just referencing gang violence. Okay, cool. Um, you, in preparation, you, you knew you were going to be testifying eventually, and you provided a uh, CV I did. To, the, um, to the state, correct? I did. It's probably been a while, though, since because okay. I might have updated it since I um, since I did my Daubert, maybe. Okay. You, yes, I understand. Um, on Friday, when uh, the state was asking about some of your your background experiences, um, you you were asked, "Have you received training?" on how gangs use music to promote violence? And you answered yes. I, did, I have. Okay, could you tell me the name of that class and who taught it and when that occurred? Um, I have attended like the Georgia Gang Investigation Association uh, training where, and I can't remember the name of the individual i know uh marissa vivrito has taught one at apd but when i went to the ggia one i can't remember the name of these the people none of it's, these people I've had like at least two or three classes so have marissa been able to is someone who works for work for the da tell about their training time, correct? she used to and she right and she's it also seem like none of them have had the much special Georgia, training correct? uh yes and you know where to be the on the witness list for none of this them. case correct okay so she taught that class. She taught one of them. Okay. I've been to more than one. Well, who specifically talked about how gangs use music? What what individual, what professor, or was it an artist that talked about that? Who was it? It wasn't a professor. It was law enforcement. Oh, law enforcement. And, mm -hmm. and who was the law enforcement? The one that I do remember recently was uh, Marissa. She teaches one. She taught one at APD. All right. Marissa Viverito, who mm -hmm. used to work for the DA's office. Okay. Um, so there was no one from the music industry, no artists or anything there. Okay. No. How gangs, you were asked how gangs, you were asked if you had training in how gangs use music to promote fear in other gangs. Again, who were the musicians or anyone that, that spoke to you about that? No musicians. I think okay. the classes that I've taken have been all from uh, law enforcement. Law enforcement when it came <laughs> to gangs. My other classes cops teaching cops. Some of the southern were professors, but they didn't talk about gangs. Okay, and in the how gangs but, use music to promote fear in other gangs. What date was that? Who who taught you about that? I I told you what class. I don't remember the instructor on one of them, but I do. Like I said, the most recent one at APD within the last three years. It might've been while she was still here. Uh, she taught that one. That was, that's the one that stands, stands out. But I did go to one down in South Fulton as well, but it was like a GGI train, GGIA train. Uh, you were asked how gangs use, you were asked about your training or, or education and how gangs use music to promote cohesiveness. Who, who taught that class? Is that the same answer? It would be the same, for, yeah. Okay, so no one from the music industry, and it oh, seems no. like every class was law enforcement. And 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 the one that you're speaking of is Investigator Viverito, who's on the state's witness list for this case. That's one of them. Okay, and uh, the same answer would be for your experience when the state asked you how gang members use music to send messages to rival gangs. Would those be your same answers? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and then you, you were asked by the state here, among other things, to talk about lyrics in this case. And, um, and you've been speaking about specific lyrics. Yes. Okay. In that bad boy um, video, you didn't recognize the other artist? 
No. You I don't hear, know who that is. You ever hear Juice World? I've heard of it, but I don't. I, that's not anybody that came on the radar because he had been okay. probably committed a crime here in Atlanta. Okay. Um, hmm. So, as I understand it, in preparation of his testimony, and correct me if I get the timing wrong, sometime last week, the state gave you some music videos to review or I'm some songs to review. Up a yes. bit. Okay. How many? The three. Okay. It was just those three. Just these three. Okay. And they were all uh, songs by Jeffrey Williams. Yes. Okay. Um, did they not ask you to review a song called Homicide written and performed by Lil Woody featuring <laughs> Fagiano? There's Woody. Never heard of it, no. Have you ever watched that video? I haven't. Okay. Are Are you aware of this song? No. You aware that in that music video in that song, Woody put, talks about putting money on someone else's head? Not aware. Are you aware that the person he talks about putting money on their head is a heavy set African American male? Not aware of that. Are you aware that the person he conspires with in that video to kill the heavy set African American male is Trevante Turner? And I'll say objection vague as to oh. what happened in the video. Yes. This video are so I haven't seen the video. Woody was okay, a witness. So you're not aware that he was... Trevante Turner played the role of the hitman in Woody's video where uh, I haven't seen that video. He depicts killing a heavy set African American man. Woody took a plea bargain. No further questions. Thank you. All right, are there to testify against the rest questions? of these boys? No. All right, is there redirect? Go ahead. And Woody's outsmarted them all just by playing to be as dumb as you could possibly be. He was questioning you if any of these lyrics mention Donovan Thomas Jr.'s name inside of those songs. You recall that recall question. That question? When you're listening to songs that may become a part of your investigation, do the ops yeah. usually say specifically the person's name or is it more of a hidden message? What has been your experience when you're listening to the music that comes a part of your investigation? My experience is, is uh, not directly, you know, saying the person's name is like sending a message, but like if 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 that particular person or that person's group or person's gang know that I committed a crime or know that we have beef, then a lot of times they know it's obvious who they're uh, sending the message to. And we say it's obvious, is it? obvious to the opposition gang who the message is being targeted. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Because everybody thinks everything's about them. We're so self-centered as human beings. Mr. Shard asked you about whether or not anyone from the music industry came and taught your class. Do you remember him asking you a series of questions about that? Yes. The classes that you took, were they focused on music or focused on gangs? Focused on gangs. And have you ever had anyone from the music industry come and talk to you about gangs? No. Court's indulgent. All right, any uh, recross? Yeah. All right, uh, thank you for your time. You're excused. Call your next witness. No. And we'll stop it right there. I just wanted you all to see Kentucky in the house. <laughs> Down in Georgia. All right, y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye. It was great. <laughs>